All right, here we are, uh, understanding and obeying the Ten Commandments. Uh, we're at lesson number 10 in this uh, series. We're doing commandment number eight, and the title of this lesson is uh, Taking Without Permission. So let's read the commandment itself in Exodus uh, chapter 20, uh, verse 15. Very briefly, it states, Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. So the basic command is that you are not to take without permission what does not belong to you. Uh, this includes taking objects or feelings or rights or knowledge or potential or ability, all of these things, things that don't belong to us, we are not permitted to take these things without permission. The key question, regardless of the object, is does this thing truly belong to me? And the key principle is that we should love our neighbor as ourselves, and so therefore we would not take from our neighbor uh, in a manner that you know, we would not uh, want others to uh, treat us. Um, aside from property violations, uh, stealing is always an act of unkindness towards someone else. So, how do we uh, break this commandment? Various ways that we break this commandment. First of all, basically taking property that is not ours to take. Uh, stealing, fraud, cheating, uh, borrowing without paying back. Extortion, for example, you know, threaten someone to, you know, to give you something under threat of, of violence. Uh, another way that we break the commandment, through gambling, popular way. Uh, gambling is simply the effort to gain without work or honest effort, or to gain without um, effort to gain something else at uh, someone else's loss. In other words, we gain because somebody else uh, loses. Uh, as far as gambling is concerned, many people have to lose so one individual uh, can win. Uh, the other point about gambling, as far as Christians are concerned, is that uh, gambling is poor stewardship of one's possessions because you are risking to gain instead of working, uh, working to gain, and that's not good, uh, uh, good stewardship. We know that gambling uh, is uh, exercising low moral standards. Let's face it, no one is able to witness or exalt Christ through the action of gambling. Uh, even non-believers see gambling as a vice and not something that Christians uh, should be doing. Uh, the command not to steal um, uh, also includes uh, failing to give full value. Uh, becomes a little more subtle here. Uh, companies, for example, that overcharge for their products or employers who don't provide for their employees in a proper way, or employees who are lazy, or false uh, and misleading um, claims uh, about the value or the effectiveness of products or services. All of these things, uh, failing to give full value, is a, is a form of stealing. Another way we break the commandment, denying someone else's rights. I mean, it, it, it's a just thing to press for true and equal rights. That's a biblical thing. However, not everything is a right and not everything we do uh, is right. For example, it's not our right to, uh, it's an old story here or an old example, but it isn't our right to yell fire in a crowded theater uh, for fun when this is not true. Um, to deny someone their true rights by law uh, is, is, a, is a form of stealing. Um, uh, another way that we break this uh, command, and I know I'm, I'm going through them uh, quickly, uh, just giving you the highlights here, uh, but another way that we uh, break this command is failing to give uh, to the Lord. Now, talking about the believers. In 1 Corinthians 16, one to three, Paul talks about uh, the, the command to, um, in God's word, uh, to provide a generous portion of what we have been given by the Lord uh, in return to the Lord. Uh, when we fail to do so, we fail to recognize who it is that provides us with everything that we have. And we are stewards for Christ who are not able to make a good witness uh, with our offering to God if we, you know, if we, um, if we refrain from, from doing that. 
Uh, make no mistake, no one is impressed with a stingy Christian, no matter how much Bible he knows. A lot of people, you know, they know the Bible and they spout a lot of things, but what they know about the Bible, but in their actions, we see a kind of a hardness of heart or a stinginess, you know. Uh, that doesn't impress uh, non-Christians uh, very much. It's not a very good witness for Christ. I mean, the, the idea is if Christ gave his life for us, how can we hold back in the giving of money or service so that others can be saved by him? It's one way that we witness our faith. Um, there are other aspects uh, to this commandment. Uh, Thou shalt not steal. But the few examples that I've given you gives you an idea of the many ways that people break this uh, commandment uh, in relationship to uh, uh, other people and, and how we break uh, this commandment before God when we do not uh, properly give to God a, a portion of our, uh, of our prosperity. Now, although this command is stated in negative terms, you know, thou shalt not steal, uh, there are some positive elements that are attached to it. For example, uh, good stewardship, and I've spoken about that before. Um, it's not just about stealing. The reverse uh, is the admonition to um, care for the things which God has given to you and into your care. Uh, God wants us to be good managers of what He blesses us with, whether it's great or small. And if we are, you know, if we are good stewards, um, then we're not tempted to steal. In Matthew 25, 14 to 30, you know, the, the parable of the talents, uh, that parable teaches that, that God forbids us, um, excuse me, that God provides us rather with everything that uh, we have. Uh, the money we have, the health that we enjoy, the talent that we exercise, the opportunities in our life, the abilities and so on and so forth. God is the one that provides all of these things. God allows us to manage these things. And God will, however, require um, us to give an accounting of what we have done with our blessings and our opportunities. Uh, God will reward and punish accordingly. The Bible teaches us these things. And so the positive and proactive side of this commandment calls on us to practice good stewardship of our blessings. Good stewardship is the opposite of dishonest gain. The second positive element promoted by this command is proper priorities. Good stewardship requires us to establish the right priorities with our blessings, whatever those uh, may be. So here's a, a basic priority list that uh, can provide guidance. Priority list, number one, give the first portion of your blessings to the Lord. In Matthew chapter six, verses 24 and 31 to 33, we read the following. Jesus says, no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. And then in chapter six, verse 31, he says, do not worry then saying, what will we eat or what will we drink or what will we wear for clothing? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things for your heavenly father knows that you need all these things, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. So this may not be the biggest portion you know, that you give, this may not be the biggest portion you give uh, or spend or invest, but it needs to be the first that you consider if you want to have your priorities correct. In other words, if you want to have your priorities correct, then the first portion of your gain or your wealth or your salary, the first portion needs to go to the Lord. If you give God the first portion, then He will bless uh, you in the management of the balance. So if I have $100 and I give God the first portion, whatever that is, let's say it's $5 or $10 or $20, it doesn't matter. I have $100, I give to the Lord $10. Well, it means that I've given Him the very first portion. And because I've given Him the very first portion willingly and faithfully, 
He blesses me in my management of the rest that I keep. In other words, God deserves that we should give him everything uh, that we have because he has blessed us, but he only asks us to give him the first portion. Doesn't ask us to give everything, just the first portion. And when we do that, he helps us manage uh, the rest. Second, we're talking about priorities. First, give to the Lord. Second, take care of our family. In Matthew chapter five, verse eight, uh, excuse me, in first Timothy rather, uh, five verse eight, uh, Paul writes, but if anyone does not provide for his own and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So if you don't care for your family, uh, you, you're not witnessing for Christ, basically what Paul is saying here. Your family, of course, includes those in your family who need your help, parents, grandparents, widows, orphans, those people in your family. So we're talking about priorities in how we distribute our wealth and how we uh, distribute our, our salary and so on and so forth. So prior, priority number one, we give the first portion of our increase to the Lord. Priority number two, we take care of our family. Priority number three, we take care of our commitments. In Matthew 22, verse 21, and Romans 12, 11, says the following. Uh, they said to him, um, uh, uh, you know, they, uh, there was a question of uh, the apostles having to, uh, uh, to pay tax. Uh, should they pay the taxes you know, to the Roman government? And some Jews thought, well, that was blasphemous because you know, uh, the picture of uh, the emperor was on the coin and that was blasphemous, that was idolatry. You know? And they were trying to trap Jesus you know, in a no-win situation. So Jesus says, bring me one of these coins. Uh, you know, because they were saying to him, should we pay taxes, you know, as Jews? And so Jesus says, uh, bring, me, bring me a coin. And he asks them, uh, whose picture is on this coin? And that's where this passage picks up. It says, they said to him, Caesar's. Then he said to them, then render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and to God the things that are God's. And then in Romans chapter 12, verse 11, Paul speaking about our responsibility to the government says, not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. So you have the two here in balance, in your commitments. You have to pay your taxes and your bills and your loans and your living and recreational expenses and your savings and your investments. I mean, you're part of a community and you support the community with your taxes and your neighbors with your timely payment of your bills and your future with wise savings and investments. God will always provide for these things if you provide him with the first portion and then provide for your family and then take care of your commitments and your obligations. Um, there can be, uh, all of these things can be subdivided in a lot of different ways. But for our stewardship to be successful and for God to bless us and prosper us, we need to keep these priorities in order. The Lord first with our wealth, secondly, to care for our families. Thirdly, we take care of our uh, taxes, responsibilities, uh, and various uh, other needs. So the eighth commandment demands that we not take what does not belong to us rightly. The way to avoid temptation to this sin is by practicing good stewardship and establishing right priorities for the management and the distribution of our wealth. That's how we, that's how we fight against the temptation to be dishonest, to, 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 to steal or to take what is not ours. We also avoid the temptation to steal if we learn to be satisfied with what we have. The other things we said about priorities, that's kind of a practical day by day, you know, habits to get into that will enable us to resist this temptation uh, to take what is not ours. Um, on the spiritual and emotional side, how do we avoid falling into this uh, temptation to take what is not ours or to cheat or to steal? How do we avoid that? Well, first of all, learn to be satisfied with what you have. Don't envy or complain or blame, blame other people for your lack. You know, if you're missing something, don't complain about it. Ask God and he will provide. Uh, number two, uh, learn to give thanks for what you do have, not for what you don't have. 
You know, so some people will complain about what they don't have instead of giving thanks for what they do have. Giving thanks for what you do have is the beginning of prosperity. The saying is that prosperity begins with a thankful heart. You start giving thanks for what you already have and that helps you to be content. And contentment leads to peace and peace enables you to live in such a way that God is able to bless you. And then learn to be faithful. Learn to be faithful with little things. Uh, you can cheat and steal in order to have big things, but this will, not, you know, this will not teach you faithfulness, obviously. God will bless you with wealth when He thinks that you can handle it. In the end, all wealth is to help us demonstrate our, our faith. This is what wealth is for. I mean, in the world, wealth is to guarantee your safety or to guarantee your security, right? Wealth is to uh, uh, provide you with uh, resources to have entertainment and, and gratification. Well, that's in the world. But how do Christians view wealth? Christians view wealth from a perspective of stewardship. Wealth is, the, is what God gives us so that we can provide for others, not so that we can hoard it for ourselves. Okay. Well, here are a couple of questions now uh, that you can use for your small group uh, discussion at the end of this lesson. I thank you for your attention. We'll see you next time when we'll uh, discuss commandment number nine. Question number one, describe a time when you took something that did not belong to you. How did you feel? Question number two, in which way does this command tempt you the most? Why? Question number three, describe the person that you feel is a good steward. What is it about him or her that impresses you? Question number four, what would it take to make you satisfied financially? Will it be possible? <laughs>